Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Tech. This is Piyush. Uh, today I am going to discussing about very important some topics. Uh, those are related with uh, advanced structure engineering. Uh, few of my friends, colleagues, and my juniors they uh, told me to make a video about p delta analysis, but uh, I am thinking that to discuss about before discussing about pedal analysis uh, we need to understand some term uh, related to the structure engineering because if we understood that previous few topics then only easily we can understand about the pedal analysis because uh, p delta effect it's not a primary effect subject to the structure it is a secondary effect so first we need to try to understand uh, what are the response what are the types of response of structure when uh, primary loads are subjected to the structure after that we can understand easily uh, what are the secondary effect and how p delta just uh, one example p delta effect is a secondary effect and that p delta effect how it is uh, affecting on structures so uh, by keeping in mind p delta analysis uh, in this video i am going to discuss about linearity and nonlinearity now the question is why linearity and nonlinearity see whatever the engineering materials we are using to uh, construct any structure the behavior of that those uh, engineering materials we can understand by using stress strain curve and this stress strain curve will get from ultimate tangential testing now the question is if we do the ultimate tangential testing of material then how it is related to the structure whole structure structure means what structure means the assemble of so many structure element and that structure element how we are uh, making the structure element we are using stru uh, structural material what are the uh, engineering materials such as uh, civil engineering material these are uh, steel concrete etc now if i know the behavior of concrete then i can ident uh, understand the uh, behavior of uh, structural component those are making by concrete now if i know the behavior of steel we can understand the behavior of the structural element also those are made by steel now if i know the structural behavior of structural component then we can understand the structural behavior whole structure now here to understand the nonlinear and linear behavior i take an example of stress strain curve of mild steel uh, here along the y direction stress is showing and along the x direction strain is showing from this relation we can understand up to the point a there is so many points like point A, B, C, D, E and L. A is called this proportional point, B is elastic point, C is upper real point, D is lower real point, E is ultimate stress point and F is failure stress point. So at the point of, up to the point A we can see the stress is linearly proportional to the strain. That means up to this point Hooke's law is valid. That means this curve is following the linear curve. What is the equation of linear? Mathematical equation of the linear curve is y equals to mx. This is the equation of linear curve. And that's why we are getting the relation between stress and strain is stress equals to e into epsilon. Here e is nothing but the slope. E is nothing but the slope. So, then after the proportional point, then from this curve we can understand the curve is not linear. Here the curve equation is different. That curve equation is general mathematical equation fx equals to fx equals to ax plus ax plus b, which is this one for nonlinear curve equation. This one is nonlinear curve equation. 
Now in this stage, we can say that if we increase the stress, the strain is proportionally increased. Okay, so in this stage, we can't apply the Hooke's law. So for in case of so for the case of material, we can say up to the proportional limit, the material behavior is linear. And after the proportional limit, the material behavior is not a linear, it is non-linear behavior. Now, I am just explain same thing for a complete structure. I am considering two parameter. One is force, another one is displacement. Suppose I am considering this is one complete structure here. acting lateral force F and I am considering uh, this is suppose a displacement so if I plot a curve between displacement versus force along the y direction I am considering F along the X direction I'm considering displacement. Okay, now the curve is look like that. Here we can say up to this point the curve showing linear relationship between F and D. That means force versus displacement. That means force is proportional to D. Up to this point, and here the corner that uh, slope we call as k that is nothing but stiffness. So we can write like f equals to k into d, that is very well known equation in structure analysis force matrix equals to stiffness matrix into displacement matrix. Next up to this part, this deformation, up to the elast uh, proportional point, this deformation we call this elastic deformation. This deformation is elastic deformation. After that, the plastic deformation will start. This reason is plastic deformation. This is plastic deformation. Now, so this elastic deformation comes to the linear part and this plastic deformation comes to the non-linear part. Now, this non-linear deformation or plastic deformation is two types one one is material nonlinearity and second one is geometry nonlinearity now what is no material nonlinearity and what is uh, geometry nonlinearity material nonlinearity means what are the material we are using to build a structure the materials goes to uh, the stress on material beyond the, its proportional limit and uh, a geometric nonlinear when come to the picture if the stress limit if the uh, due to the more stress the displacement is more for this excessive deformation or excess, excessive displacement then geometry nonlinearity is come to the picture now if I uh, mathematical equation if I uh, write down for this portion for uh, plastic deformation it is like fx equals to fx equals to ax plus b. So this equation in structural point of view uh, the analysis of structure in this part is little bit lengthy and mathematically we need to solve so many equations to solve uh, so nowadays we are using so many software to do the non-linear analysis 
we move, we can analyze by ETFs. We can analyze uh, the whole structure using say two thousand or step group like that. So, um, but after analysis, we have find out the strength capacity of whole structure. So this is the linear part and non-linear part. Okay, I hope you people can understand. Later, now we are going to um, not now. Later we are uh, explain or uh, explain about uh, P delta analysis. That P delta is a ge uh, geometrical nonlinear part. It's not a material nonlinear. So we we'll later we'll discuss when we will discuss about the P delta analysis. That time uh, you can understand very well because it is comes under nonlinear geometry. Okay, thank you so much.